Okay, so what we have here is a 6502 retro computer. Okay, if you look at the board, this is the um, 6551, a level shifter for RS-232, and the RS-232 out. This is a Commodore disk port, a video out. This is a AVR acting as a video chip. That's an unpopulated 6522. One of my 6522s was bad. Uh, two crystals. There's my EEPROM, which I programmed with the EEPROM burner. That is um, the RAM, it's 60, the 32K of RAM. 6502, there's the expansion bus. This is all the glue logic that basically does the address decoding. Okay, so there's a 6502. What it does is every one of these chips has sort of a smaller address space and a chip select, and these chips basically will map various addresses in the memory map to a particular chip. There is a 6522. Um, so basically it's got a total of 32 GPIO pins, and it uses some of those for the disk port, some of those to, to do an SPI with the video chip. And there's a joystick port, as well as just a bunch of GPIO pins on the bottom. Okay, it's powered by a USB connector. That's not for data. That's just because USB connectors are really readily available. This design is essentially a 2.7 design. First person, a guy named um, Daryl. I can't remember his last name, but I'll put links in the description. Came up with the first design. And then Rich Cini revised it and added uh, the video port and the Commodore disk port. So basically when building a retro computer, it's a lot easier to go with an existing design than have to figure out how to do it all from scratch. And I was able to get, a, get in on a purchase of some of these boards from, the, um, from, from Rich, basically. So if you look at my uh, monitor, I just typed list, and I got a syntax error because I typed lists are, not list. Hard to type one-handed. So that little program is an LED blink sample, okay? So when I run that, what it's going to do is blink one of the GPIO pins, okay? So now what I'll do is I'll type run. One of the nice things about white on black is it shows up much better on video than black on white. Okay, there you go. I've seen that video blinking, that LED blinking right away. Okay, I'll run it one more time just so you can see that. And really fast. I can make it blink slower if I want to. So the cool thing about this computer is it's got 32K of RAM, 32K of ROM. So you can put pretty much anything conceivable in the ROM. Basic interpreter, fourth interpreter, a bunch of um, things to control the pins to do things like stepper motors. Then you've got RAM on top of it, which is really nice. Plus, because it has a disk drive port, you can you can actually interface it with a um, solid-state disk drive. They make solid-state disk drives that conform to the Commodore port, believe it or not. And so now you've got mass storage, and it also has video out. So the only thing I need to add to it is a keyboard, and you have a completely self-hosted system. Um, now, this isn't, of course, as, as rough and crude as my EEPROM burner, but I decided to, to put the effort into the EEPROM burner and get a board from somebody else because the wire wrapping this thing or soldering it point to point or doing whatever would have been really tedious. So that is the retro computer and I'm probably going to use it in some more upcoming videos.